A study by the McKinsey Global Institute uh, predicted that one-third of all work activities will be replaced by automation by the year 2030, as well as 30% of the majority of occupations could be automated. If this automation comes through, we will see millions of people thrown into uh, unemployment, and most of whom are low or over-specialized in their marketable skills. A study published in the Journal for Vocational Behavior found that the chances of developing mental illness almost double when you're, uh, un when you're unemployed. And the correlation is highest with blue-collar workers and low-skill workers, the ones that will be most affected by this unemployment swing. But progress is good. Automation uh, you know, produces cheaper products. It produces things faster. And it will overall make the workplace safer. So how do we, how do we embrace uh, how do we embrace progress while also tackling an economic crisis that is ahead of us? Well, we need to produce a fiscally sound policy that minimizes inflation, ensures competitiveness, and will be the basis for a sustainable economic system. Universal basic income has risen as an answer to this crisis. Uh, so much that Andrew Yang, a 2020 Democratic candidate for president, is running as it as his flagship policy. Yang's policy is to give every American over the age of 18 $1,000 a month, every month, for life, no questions asked. Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater Associates, the largest hedge fund in the world, predicts that Yang's plan will cost upwards of $30.8 trillion. Let's go over some things that people uh, have problems with the universal basic income. First thing is a lot of people say is that the recipients of this will get lazy and will tend towards drug and alcohol use. But a study by the World Bank found that recipients of similar, uh, similar pro programs, in 82% of cases had a negative correlation with the consumption of alcohol and tobacco. And in all cases that were positive, the data wasn't considered statistically significant. The current tax revenues of the United States sit at $3.4 and our outstanding debt is at $22.2 .2 according to the debtclock.org. Um, many people say that universal basic income will simply just be too expensive and we can't afford it. And other people's their answer to that is that we should increase taxes. I don't believe this is a good answer and I'll explain to you why. If you look at how our tax rates have dropped over the last half century, and especially in our, in our top tax rates dropping from 90% back in the 50s and 60s down to the 40s and 30s where we are now. And then if you also look at our tax revenues staying at about 25% of GDP, we can draw, the, we, we, we can figure out that unless we, unless we have a significant increase in GDP production, we simply won't get enough revenue to fund universal basic income by increasing taxes. So we need to look into our budget and find what we can cut and replace with universal basic income. Which is why I suggest we eliminate the minimum wage, abolish Social Security, and eliminate federal welfare funding. I'll go into this. So for minimum wage, uh, the usual argument for minimum wage is they need a living wage. People need to be comfortably and they shouldn't live below the poverty line. Universal basic income is a perfect solution to that because $12,000 a year, which is $1,000 a month, is what's considered poverty here in the United States. So the argument for living wages with minimum wage go out. And if we leave it in, it leaves some externalities that we don't want, and let me explain that to you. So this is the labor market. It's on an axis of price and quantity. The demand for labor is anybody that's trying to hire anybody, any company. Depending on the price, they, wanted, they would hire more or less people. The same thing that we got the supply of labor. This is anybody that wants to work at any certain price. As the price go up, more people are willing to work at that price. You'll notice that they meet right here. It's called market equilibrium. And at this point, both sides agree consensually that that is the value of their labor at the quantity that's provided. And people will, this quantity of people will be, uh, will be employed. However, if we institute a minimum wage, the demand for, for labor at this price will only be this. So we'll only hire, we'll hire less people. And what this leaves is a certain number of people where if the market were untouched, 
would be employed and earning money that are now unemployed that are because of an externality of a policy that's meant to give them more money. Moving on to Social Security. Um, in 2010, Social Security paid out more money for the first time in its history than it took in. The, tr the uh, board of directors for the trust believe that their surplus will be gone by the year 2032. And if you look at this, tr this chart by the Congressional Budget Office, you'll see that in the next decade, a generation known as the baby boomers will all finish reaching the age of 65 and start collecting their Social Security benefits. Social Security is currently the largest individual, uh, largest ex individual expense in the, in the United States government at $1.1 trillion per year, and that number will continue to go up. Universal basic income can replace Social Security because it essentially does the same thing, but in a more, uh, but in a more sustainable and consistent way. The argument for eliminating welfare is very similar to Social Security because, uh, it, because it's, uh, it, uh, universal basic income can step in and do essentially what welfare intends to do, except it is, except it is more straightforward and direct. Uh, welfare cost the federal government $400 billion in 2016 and will have to be cut in order to afford universal basic income. Uh, Nobel Prize winning economist Milton Freeman was in favor of a basic income as a replacement to the welfare system because he believed that it was more efficient, got rid of government bureaucracy, and, um, and would produce a more efficient uh, free market. So in conclusion, our, our uh, society is on an exponential curve of automation, and we could be progressing ourselves into an economic crisis. Universal basic income has come up as an answer that could solve this crisis. However, concerns over the price tag and, and understandable inflation means that it doesn't fit in in our current system to, of government benefits. We went over solutions such as eliminating the minimum wage and welfare programs as well as Social Security to make a, a, as uh, reasonable and necessary amendments to universal basic income to ensure that it's a fiscal policy that is sound, minimizes inflation, ensures competitiveness, and will be the basis for a, for a stable economic system. With the information that I've given you today, I hope that you remember it the next time you enthusiastically talk about U.S. fiscal policy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>